Hey, what is going on, guys? DK back at you with another video here. It's right on the final NBA slate before the uh, All Star break. If you guys are new to the channel, welcome. My name is DK. I make content for Daily Fantasy Sports, for NBA Top Shot, and for Prize Picks, which is a player prop site. Um, guys, if you're interested in premium content, I'll find on Patreon.com for more in depth um, content for DFS. Again, info is down below. We really hammer home game theory and talk about. Um, you know, potential low owned pivots and all that stuff. So um, again, if you, if you want, if that's something that interests you, more info is down below. Um, if you're unable to watch the video to do upload an Apple podcast, the link is also in the description below. And the sponsor of this video, guys, is Prize Picks. So as I said, Prize Picks is a player prop site. Um, a lot of different ways you can play for NBA. You can take over under on fancy points, over under on points, rebounds, assists, three pointers made. You can also mix and match sports. And as you can see at the top, they have every single sport you can think of. They have esports stuff, um, WNBA or um, WNBA Euro, women's college basketball, college basketball, PGA, MMA, tennis. Um, you can mix and match sports. So how it works is again, you pick two to five player pops, and you can win up to ten x your money. So if you're a new user and want to give it a try, you can sign up and use my code DKDFS for a 100% match up to $100. So that's basically a free $100 to play with on the site. And finally, as always, I want to thank everyone for your continued support. Uh, really appreciate all this, guys. Uh, can't do this without you. Um, again, if you do enjoy it, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Okay, so uh, let's take a look back line up here from tonight. So once again, another really solid night for me. Um, I want pretty contrarian. So... Um, I had a lot of hot takes. So let's first start with my hot take of the previous slate, where I thought Quentin Grimes was the worst play, the worst GBP play in the slate factoring in ownership, right? Quentin Grimes was like 50% that last slate. And of course, he like, as I told you, he couldn't miss and had like two steals and a block for low usage guy. I was like, okay, whatever. I also mentioned then that I liked quickly in a large field tournament as a pivot off of chalk Quentin Grimes and quickly shot O of seven. 0 of 7 that last game for the Knicks. Now tonight, what does Quentin Grimes do? Nothing. Nothing. Goes for like 12 fancy points. Like you couldn't do that when I faded you as massive chalk? Really, Quentin Grimes? And the cherry on top of that, Emmanuel quickly absolutely goes off for like 40 fantasy points. One day early. So frustrating, but um, yeah, so my take uh, again for tonight was I thought Aaron Wiggins was basically an identical play to Quentin Grimes last slate of the worst GBP play of the slate factoring ownership, right? He was about 50% owned for a score independent player um, that needed the minutes to be there, and he busted. And again, I wanted none of that. I wanted none of a 50% owned score independent player. There was just too many other values that were, um, you know, uh, good values that were going to come in at much, much less ownership. So uh, two value plays that I mentioned were those Rockets guys, Sengun and Schroeder. Made a post about it, too. Those are my two favorites. But, you know, you got to factor in the potential for a blowout. They somehow kept, they almost won the game. And Sengun and Schroeder absolutely smashed. I've been saying it all year. Why are we not giving Sengun more minutes? Imagine not trading away Christian Wood, right? Imagine keeping Wood. So Sengun, like, ugh, that's so frustrating. But, um, yeah, those guys absolutely smashed. I was very high in the Sacramento Kings for tournaments. We got news pre-lock that they were going to run a tighter rotation. It was a great matchup. Sabonis and Fox are two of my favorite tournament plays in Slate. They went absolutely off. Also went to a lower owned DiVincenzo, who was solid. Um, and then I once again stacked the Pacers and ran it back with uh, Kuzma. Uh, my boy, there will be no more Kuzma slander. Uh, yeah, Halberton healed uh, Smith, who... They released Tristan Thompson right after the game. Like, you couldn't do that before the game. They re You're really going to play Tristan Thompson over Jalen Smith? Really? Like, everyone had Jalen Smith tonight, but that was that was still frustrating. Uh, Capella was massive chalk. Um, he was on pace for a big night, but it blew out. I was actually happy, though, that the game blew out. Because Capella still got value, nothing crazy. But a, a very high-owned Trey Young uh, did not see the fourth quarter. Um, so that actually did help me. Um, let's see what else was there that I wanted to bring up. Um, again, just ownership, right? This year, as you know, as I say this almost every single slate, uh, you know, the optimal plays as you, as you would say, um, actually go way over owned tournaments. So, you know, I was very scared about fading Trey Young today. I thought he's one of the better sped ups of the slate. 
But should Trey Young have been 40% owned and Fox and Sabonis been like sub 5% in tournaments? Should that have been the case? I would say no, right? Again, sure, I got lucky fading uh, Trey Young because the blowout, but the ownership shouldn't have been that wide. And you're seeing that in a lot, like that's just one example, but like there's a lot of examples like that where, um, you know, if you can identify the good low owned pivots, you can make a lot of money in GPPs because as I said, it's no longer the the case of just trying to find out the best places. Basically, everyone knows the best place, right? Everyone knows who's you know going to be the chalk. It's the key is can you identify those good low own plays? Um, so one low own play that I liked that was a miss tonight was um, Peyton Pritchard. I thought he was a pretty uh, decent pivot um, off of some of the chalkier uh, value. I thought, you know, if the game blew, blew out, which had a good chance uh, of, that he would get the blowout run. And he only played about 15 minutes. So that was like a swing and a miss by me. Uh, let's see, what else was there? I'm trying to think. Uh, how about my boys, Nurkic and Ja going back and forth? How about the Blazers too? The new big three of Simons, uh, Nurkic, Goat, and Josh Hart. They're looking good. Um, of course, Gary Trent Jr. is chalk. Uh, just always shoots lights out, a tradition like any other, as you saw on Twitter. But um, yeah, that was basically it for the look back. So once again, a really solid night um, for myself. Looks like we might have a couple of big nights for Patreon members as well. We have, I saw a couple people play Sengen and Schroeder together. Uh, so, uh, it might be a, a, a few pretty big nights for, for Patreon members, but, um, yeah, guys, uh, that was it for the look back. Um, this was, I, I was checking out ownership and high stakes is the $2,000 entry again, Trey young, 50% owned again, one of the best plays in the slate for sure. Uh, got unlucky with, uh, the blowout, but again, should he have been 50% as a, an 11 game slate again, right? Uh, let's see what else, what else, um, Wiggins is only 30% in this contest. He was a little bit higher on in some other contest. Uh, Bruce Brown got some ownership. As you know, with the Nats, they're going to go with a hot hand. And Buddy Heald was very popular. He was solid. Yeah, Quentin Grimes. He still got some ownership. Where was he? Uh, he was like 17%. Yeah. You couldn't have done that last slate. You couldn't have gone for 16 fancy points last slate when I faded you as massive chalk. Uh, but yeah, guys, that's it for the look back. So let's talk about this five-game slate. And at the top, uh, for my, or we have Miami. So great matchup here for the Heat. Jimmy Butler's questionable. He's been questionable the last couple games with this, with this shoulder injury. So I'm fully expecting him to play. So I think Jimmy and Bam both look really, really solid here. Uh, again, Charlotte's one of the worst of defenses in the NBA. And I love attacking or playing players against the Charlotte Hornets defense. So I think Jimmy and Bam both look really, really good. I think Lowry is like solid in the mid range. He'll play big minutes. Um, he can have you know ceiling game playing alongside these two, but he definitely takes a backseat to Jimmy and Bam. Hero is out, so like the value are in play here. Like Robinson and Vincent and Tucker and Struss, um, you know, should get a little bit more run. Keep an eye on Martin. If he plays, I would expect him to be in the rotation. If he misses, again, probably solidify the Mets for those value plays. And then with Deadman out. Uh, we're finally seeing a uh, yurt goat seven back in the rotation and you can see what this guy can do, right? In only 15 minutes, 22 fancy points. I don't hate him as a contrarian play and he'll play the backup five alongside bam. They experimented a few games ago. They played him a little bit alongside bam. I don't know if we see that, uh, for this game, but, um, yeah, I think that's it for Miami. So on the Charlotte side, awful matchup, like Miami's the team. I really don't like playing players against, but Charlotte, we know is going to run a tight rotation. So like, the big three, Lamella, Rogier, Bridges, even though it's an awful matchup, I think you can consider those guys in tournaments. Ubre feels a little bit pricey. Can we talk about this Mason Plumley stat line too? 14, 17, and 9. I mean, where does that come from? Like, what? Uh, so I don't like that's not gonna happen again. Him and Harrell kind of splitting the five minutes. Yeah. Peach Washington did start last game. He played 33 minutes. He's a fair value. Like, he's probably the guy that's the easiest to get to, Peach Washington. That's assuming he starts again. Boke Knight probably plays 15 to 20 minutes of the bench, but really not a ton that stands out to me on the Charlotte side. Washington and Brooklyn. So, like I said, there will be no Kuzma slander on this channel. Kyle Kuzma um, has been playing really well. Again, no Brad Beal. Dinwiddie out of town. Porzingis is not playing. So, he's just going to do everything for this team. Well, for 26, 15, and 6 tonight. 
Now he gets Brooklyn that have really not been playing any defense. So I think Kuzma, even at this price point, looks pretty solid again. Uh, Thomas Bryant at 4-7 feels a little bit pricey. Uh, now, we find this a little bit more run from him, 24 minutes, but uh, more of a secondary play. The two guards, Neto and Smith, will kind of split the point guard duties. Um, Neto is you know, probably going to play a little bit more, but he's also a little bit pricier. Ishmith probably ho hovers around 20 minutes. Um, Denny, KCP, Kispert all look solid here too, especially if Rui's out. Like we should see 30 minutes for all three of these guys. Um, probably my favorite of the three would be Denny. We saw a big game from KCP tonight, but again, he got hot. Um, so that's kind of an outlier. Don't expect 40 from KCP again. And then Kispert, again, lower usage guy, but um, he should uh, play around 30 minutes. Uh, when Kispert's chalk, again, he's going to go for six assists and 20 points. That's just, you know, typical. But, um, yeah, again, he's in play for value now on the Brooklyn side. So, uh, Kyrie, Ben Simmons, Durant, again, are all out. So, uh, Andre Drummond at 6K, I think, makes a pretty good play in the mid-range. Now, he's not going to get a ton of run. But low low to mid-20s, minutes 24 and 23 over the last couple games. And we know he's a really good point for minute guy. So, I think Drummond looks decent there in the mid-range. Cam Thomas has been playing pretty well off the bench. I think he sees around 30 minutes. I kind of like him in GPPs. Uh, Seth Curry, uh, I think is my favorite of the Brooklyn Nets. He played 36 minutes tonight. Um, he's a guy that's been doing a lot of the ball handling as well. So I do like Seth Curry at 5'5". Five, five. Uh, Patty Mills has been awful recently. Shot 2 of 13 in 38 minutes tonight, but the minutes are still there. Um, I think he's like an interesting contrarian play because he can still have upside. Right? We've seen some big games from Patty Mills and the big three have been out. So like, I'm not completely ruling out Mills. Um, but, uh, again, definitely more of a contrarian option. Aldridge will play the backup five, and he'll probably see low 20s minutes. I think he's a fair play. We know, again, Aldridge and Drummond are both good point-per-minute guys. Uh, Claxton and Blake Griffin are basically out of the rotation. Bruce Brown, after the massive game, kind of came back down to earth. We also saw a lot less minutes. Again, that's Steve Nash for you, right? You never know what's going to happen in the rotation, but assuming he starts again, you can play him. Uh, we did see James Johnson start. James Johnson starts again. I kind of like him for value. Value, he's a good point per minute guy. I went for 30 fancy points in 32 minutes. Dallas, New Orleans. I mean, Luka Doncic. I mean, he still had a relatively decent game against Miami. Went for like 50 fancy points. Again, Miami's just a, a just great defensive team. Now he gets the Pelicans. Um, I think Luka is one of the better spin ups in the slate. Uh, besides last game against Miami, he's been averaging like 70 fancy points a game. So, yeah, I like Luka a lot. Uh, Brunson is fine in the mid range. He should play big minutes. Dinwiddie only saw, what was it 23 minutes? Eh, probably not for me. Bullock's status is uh, up in the air. We did see um, Josh Green start uh, at 3.4K. If he starts again, sure, you can use him, but I don't expect big minutes. Dorian Finney Smith, a low usage guy that's going to play big minutes. Uh, more often than not, he's going to hover, you know, get your 20 ish fancy points. Um, and then Kleba, we saw get a little bit more run last game. He played 35 minutes. Um, you know, if there's no Bullock, I would assume, you know, Kleba's pushing for around 30 minutes and get a look at one of the better values. Uh, and then Dwight Powell saw a little bit uh, extra run as well. He saw 26 minutes. Both the bigs, I think, are decent options. You know, this is a bigger front court against the Pelicans, against the likes of like Jonas Valanciunas and Jackson Hayes. So I think those guys look good. And we did see Bertans uh, play a little bit, 13 minutes, but uh, I don't think, I need to see him play more before I can go to him. On the Pelican side, so CJ's played really well uh, for the Pelicans in his first few games. Um, he's kind of taken over as the lead dog. I'm not sure if this is going to continue every single game, but um, yeah, I think CJ makes for a pretty decent spend up here. Brandon Ingram has taken a little bit of a backseat, uh, but I think he he can still, like he went for 42 two games ago. So, um, you know, both the, the stars are in play here for the Pelicans and CJ and an Ingram. Jonas Valanciunas has been kind of quiet over the last couple of weeks. He did get in some foul trouble last game. I think he's going to play at low 30s minutes and makes for a relatively safe play in the mid-range. Um, normally, guy has a pretty high floor. Herb Jones, you know, should play big minutes when we're out there for his defense. You know, Hayes at 4-6. You know, we've been seeing him play alongside JV a little bit. I think he's a fair value play. He's the guy that's been playing the most off the bench. Graham's been disappointing. His minutes have been trending down. Um, a little bit hard to go to him, even at a decreasing price point. And that is it for the Pelicans. Philadelphia, Milwaukee. So this one should be a good game. Embiid versus Giannis. Um, yeah, Embiid, if they can keep the game competitive, I mean, he's just been putting up monster, monster games. So obviously like Embiid there at the top. I think Tobias and Max in the mid-range look pretty solid um, with no James Harden. And he's going to be the number two and number three in offense. Tobias has been very quiet over the last couple of games, but um, I kind of like the price point on him. And then Max at 6-3. Feels like a pretty decent price point for a guy that should play mid-30s Mets. The two kind of secondary plays, Max and Tobias, I do think look pretty good. Now the value... Um, we'll see how they do the starting lineup. Like one game is sort of Korkmaz, the next game is sort of Danny Green. We'll see. I mean, all these guys are kind of low usage, except for Shake Milton coming off the bench. 
Um, I think he's like a fair value play, um, a guy that should see around 20 minutes. Again, Thibault more at the first defense. Korkmaz is a guy that can knock down some shots, but um, playing if he plays with the starting group, he's just going to be more of a score independent player. Um, again, Yang probably sees, I don't know, around 20 minutes on the bench. I think he's in play for value. Danny Green, if he starts, sure, should see, you know, mid-20s minutes, but it's, it's Danny Green, right? He literally, the only way he's getting fancy points is knocking down shots. And we did see Paul Reed actually play the back of five over Paul Millsap. So uh, flat min price, Paul Reed, I don't think is the worst play in a small slate. Um, if they continue to use him as the backup five over Millsap. Again, Millsap did play last game. That was because it was a massive, massive blowout. It was Paul Reed, actually, um, if you look at like Popcorn Machine, uh, he was the backup five instead of Paul Millsap. I move on to Milwaukee. So Giannis in the combo 12-1. Again, looks pretty good. Should play mid-30s minutes. I have no issue getting to Giannis. The secondary plays in Middleton, Drew, Bobby Portis all look pretty similar to me. No strong leans. They're, again, secondary options. Grayson Allen is doubtful. Um, Wesley Matthews is probable. He had missed uh, the, the last game. Um, so he's going to be back in this one. Ibaka, 4K. Um, we'll see if they do the starting lineup. Like, I don't think they would start Ibaka, Portis, and Giannis with, like, Drew and Middleton. But you never know. Um, we did see... All right, this is... Like, I talk about... Um, you know, I joke about player like fake players in the NBA a lot, but like, come on, right? Like, they're not even trying on this one. There's, there's just right. It just, it's not a real person. Come on, like the Bucks are not even trying to uh, to fake us out here. Lindell Wigington, no, 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 no. That's a fake person, but he actually did play a decent amount of minutes last game. Nawara at 3-3, I think, is the value play I consider off the bench. 24 and 26 minutes for him over the last couple games. I think he's at least interesting. And, yeah, that's it for Milwaukee. Final game, Houston and the Clippers. So, here we go. Um, you know, Houston, again, we had um, we had a lot of, you know, chalky value in the early games tonight. So, people weren't really willing to leave spots open for those, you know, Houston guys if – Wood and KPJ were out, and they like got ruled out right after like those 6:30 games started. So again, you got a very low owned Schroeder and, and Sengun that just broke the slate. They both went for like 50 fancy points. So if there's no Wood and KPJ again, I mean it's hard not to like Schroeder and Sengun, right? We're not going to get him a low ownership again. Um, Schroeder would lead the offense, probably play big minutes. Sengun or Sengun would probably play around 30 minutes. He's going to be a great point per minute guy. He went for almost 50 fancy points at 30 minutes tonight. And then, like, these other options are going to look pretty good, too. Like, Eric Gordon, Jalen Green, they probably play big minutes. Jay Sean Tate probably plays over 30 minutes. Like, the whole starting group is going to look really good. You would even consider the likes of, like, Garrison Matthews, KJ Martin, Christopher off the bench. Just a lot to like for Houston if Kevin Porter Jr. and um, Christian Wood are out once again. Um, yeah, uh, the Rockets look amazing here. They, they really, really do. So, um, a lot, a lot to like here for Houston if those two guys are out again. And then the Clippers side, there's a good amount to like here too. Great matchup. And like I said, they've been running a tighter rotation recently. Reggie Jackson, Marcus Morris, these guys should play big minutes. I mean, Reggie Jackson's playing almost 40 minutes a game. Marcus Morris most likely sees over 30 minutes. Um, he's a guy that is, definitely has upside. Terrence Mann was massive chalk last game. He was a letdown. Uh, still played 32 minutes. I think he's an interesting bounce back candidate. I think pretty low ownership. Um, Avicii Zubac has also played very well over the last couple games. The minutes have been there. He's been playing around 30 minutes. I will like Zubac a good amount here. Um, I think, you know, Batum, be careful. Like last game was, last couple games are kind of an outliers. 31 and 36 fancy points. Don't expect those type of performances uh, from Batum every single night. Like he's not going to average 1.5 fancy points per minute. So, I do think Batum is a solid value, but might be a little bit overowned in this slate. Covington most likely sees around 20 minutes off the bench. He's playable at sub 4K. Hardenstein will play the back of five. Really nothing more than a contrarian uh, dart throw in GPPs. You're hoping for like Zubac foul trouble or something. Amir Coffey, again, he's back to being just awful, right? We we saw Amir Coffey do absolutely nothing for the, the first month or two. He went on that like two week stretch where he's just amazing, the best player ever to play. And now he's just back to being awful again. I mean, What's going on here? Um, and then Luke Kennard did see or did play that last game. He played 24 minutes. I think he's he's viable for GPPs. Obviously, he's, he's kind of score independent, but um, if he's if he's going to see low to mid 20s minutes, I think you can go to him as a contrarian GPP play. 
But yeah, guys, that's going to wrap it up for the five-game slate. So if you haven't enjoyed the content, just make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Again, guys, really appreciate all your support for everyone coming and checking out the videos every single day. Um, good luck on this five-gamer, and I will see you all in the next video.